Uh, and now uh, let's move to Paweł Thank Sikora. Uh, thank you so much, Piotr, again. Uh, let's move to Paweł Sikora from uh, Technische University uh, Berlin, uh, who will talk about the 3D printable uh, wall systems. Uh, Pio uh, Paweł, please, uh, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining uh, my presentation, uh, despite it's Saturday afternoon. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my project related to uh, development of the lightweight 3D printable uh, concrete wall system. So uh, I guess you know what is additive manufacturing. This is uh, basically a, a building uh, physical components uh, by, by layer by layer method. And uh, you can actually uh, design uh, your, let's say, your shape, and then you can slice it, and then you can print it. So this technology is, is well developed in the in the field of polymer science, in, in, the, in the medicine. But with civil engineering, we have this problem in, with, in, with construction market that we as engineers, we're tr trying to adapt the technologies which, will, which are well established. This is because of the safety and the durability of material. You know, we, you cannot replace the building like a mobile phone in one week. You have to you have to build something which is standing for 100, 200 years. So uh, the 3D printing is actually something very revolutionary because if you look at the at the construction, it didn't change too much over the years. If you look at the buildings which were built 200 years ago, there's no big difference. Obviously, we have a new cement, we have a reinforced concrete, but generally uh, the, the processes are pretty same. So uh, here you can actually see how this uh, this field is developing and these large scale 3D printing projects uh, has gathered attention in the last years. Uh, and actually, not so far ago, just two weeks, three weeks ago, there is a there is a first 3D printed house with actually people inside living. So uh, this is a big uh, achievement uh, of, of civil engineers. But uh, what are the main benefits of, of, of 3D printing uh, with concrete? So uh, the first of all, uh, the, the geometrical freedom that we can print actually whatever we want. We don't need to use any form, form work. We don't have to you know, usually we put the concrete inside a certain for, formworks, but here we don't have to do it. Um, second thing is that uh, this technology is resource efficient. Uh, that's meaning we only use the material which we want to print out, so we don't have too much waste. Uh, and since we are using the 3D printer, uh, we increase the safety. And you might know that in civil engineering, we have the highest accident rate. Um, so so this, this helps us to protect the workers. And finally, uh, due to the continuous work of the printer, you can actually shorten the projects because you can you can build a house, let's say, 24 hours per day. So, so these are the benefits of uh, 3D printing. But uh, the 3D printing of concrete is not so easy because uh, the 3D the concrete was developed to be flowable. It should flow to uh, and then harden after eight hours, 12 hours, uh, or, or or whatever. But uh, for 3D printing, we actually need material which is uh, firstly flowable, so we can extrude it. But then at the end, when we extrude it, it should be stable. So we, we say that this material should have, should have a low dynamic yield stress and high static yield stress. And this phenomenon is called uh, tixotropic. So here you have the example of the printing of the, of, of the wall element. And uh, how to do it, how to create the concrete which is which is printable. So uh, here you have the example of the mixture compositions of the of the printable mixtures and the conventional concrete here. So one can see that uh, first of all, we don't use the coarse aggregate, the big particles of aggregate. And uh, what is so far not good, we have to increase the amount of the cement. And as we know, the cement is uh, responsible for the uh, for for the um, CO2 emission. Uh, I think the cement industry is responsible for seven, percent of the CO2 emission. So, so far, one of the challenges to how to make this material cheaper and more sustainable. Uh, now, another problem is that since we modified significantly the mixture composition, uh, we don't know about the durability uh, aspects of this material, and we don't have any standards uh, to, to, to verify whether this material will last for 100 years to 100 years. And another aspect is we have to find solution to replace the reinforcement because in the normal concrete we are putting steel inside but here we cannot do it because we print it and uh, the weakest the weakest the weakest part of the chain is this interlayer adhesion so here you can see the casted specimen the standard one this is the water the ingress of the water the darker thing is the how the water goes inside the specimen and here you can see the printed sample so you can clearly see that the water is going in between 
uh, the layers. So this is the micro CT image. You can see this increased porosity in this interlayer uh, connection region, which causes the, um, the, the corrosion of the material. And the, another aspect which I'm trying to, to tackle is uh, to decrease the thermal conductivity value of this concrete, because the concrete has a high uh, thermal conductivity. That means it has a low insulating property. So it's not good if we want to use uh, uh, for, for the construction. And then I'm also looking for the solution how to make the material more, let's say, eco-friendly. So the aim of my research is to develop a wall system, 3D printable wall system composed of the load-bearing element, which will be re responsible for this uh, resistance of the, of, of the, of, for the mechanical performance and the infill insulating material, which will improve the thermal performance of the building envelope. So um, how to do it? I'm firstly developing the material, which is the lightweight printable mixture. Then I'm developing the infill material, which is produced from ultra lightweight concrete. And then I'm doing the thermal evaluations of potential building envelopes. So I'm analyzing different topologies of the printed elements. Uh, so to develop such mixtures, I'm trying to, uh, to replace the cement as much as possible with the limestone powder, because this is inert and, and let's say so far sustainable material, which can be used to replace the cement. And I'm replacing the standard aggregate with recycled glass. This is, uh, this is the problem which we have in many countries that uh, we cannot recycle glass efficiently, especially very, uh, very fine uh, particles. So if you, if, if you think about the chemical composition, this is basically made of a quartz or, or, or something similar to sand. So it, it's perfectly fitting the requirements for concrete. So uh, I have developed mixtures containing 50% and 100% of the glass, and they are called G50 and G100. And I'm also including additionally some lightweight, lightweight filler, which will decrease the density of the material. And these uh, specimens are called uh, G0 ETM, G50 ETM, and G100 ETM. So uh, here's an example how it looks, how we, how we are printing uh, these samples to test them. So they kind of resemble the, the casted, the standard uh, specimens, which we analyze usually in construction. And uh, to go to the results, so the production of the lightweight uh, printable um, mixture uh, allowed me to, to produce the material which is 30% lighter than conventional concrete. What does it mean? That means the material, because uh, the main parameter responsible for the thermal conductivity of the material is the density. So by decreasing uh, the density, I also improve the thermal conductivity. So uh, here you can see this correlation, thermal conductivity versus open dry density. So my mixtures are, uh, let's say twice, they, they have a twice lower thermal conductivity than uh, the standard conventional uh, uh, 3D printable mixtures. And what is also interesting, if you use glass, you actually don't decrease uh, the compressive strength of the material. So that means we can, we can replace uh, the, the, the aggregate up to 100% with glass to have a satisfactory uh, mechanical performance of these elements. Uh, obviously, if you decrease the density, uh, the compressive strength will be dropped. It will be lower because the material is lighter, but uh, this is still enough. This mixture is still enough to be used as a construction, as this load-bearing elements. And then we go to the to actually totally opposite. Since I produced the, so the the 3D printable material, now I need to fill it inside with some infill uh, lightweight concrete, ultra lightweight concrete. And for this purpose, I need material which will be self-compacting and will, will flow very easily inside. Uh, so I have developed these mixtures, which having a thermal conductivity of, of 0.14, which is uh, four times, three times lower than the, than the load bearing element. And it is around five, six times lower. The, the density is six, six times lower than the, or five times lower than the uh, thermal, uh, than, than the conventional concrete. So uh, here you can see the different topologies, which I have analyzed. So these are the theoretical walls, which can be used, which can be printed. And I'm analyzing how, how the different infill materials will affect the thermal transmittance, so-called U-value, which is required uh, to build a building to meet the European Union requirements uh, that this building can be, can be used. And uh, I will focus mostly now on these two uh, infill materials, the foam concrete and the polyurethane foam, because this is empty. Uh, so this is just a pure wall without the, the infill material. And uh, here are the mixture uh, the standard mixture, so the G0, and the mixture containing uh, the glass and the ETM uh, particles. So we can see that definitely the, the, the thermal transmittance value, this so-called U value, has been 
uh, decreased using this, uh, this, this core element. And additionally, if you use the infill materials, different infill materials, you are improving the thermal transmittance of this element. And here you can see actually the heat flux, how the heat is running through the element, through this uh, structural element, uh, depending on the, on, on the infill material. So what I found out that using this, uh, uh, this uh, 3D printable lightweight material, you can, you can produce the envelopes, which, which are meeting the requirements for the countries in the warm climate, and if you replace the foam concrete with the polyurethane foam, uh, you can meet almost the requirements of the moderate climate uh, uh, requirements. But uh, it really depends. Everything depends on the topology of these uh, of these elements. So we can make it thicker, or we can we can make some layers uh, thinner or wider. So uh, there's a plenty to do in this field. So here's an example of these printed walls, uh, which, which which I did, and then you can see the distraction, how how they behave after the distraction. Um, so to conclude, uh, we can use the waste glass and we can use the, the limestone powder to produce uh, um, sustainable mixtures uh, for, for 3D printing applications. And if we include the lightweight fillers, we can decrease the density and improve the thermal performance of these building elements. Uh, but to optimize the U value, to use it in construction, we need, to, we need to optimize the topology. So there's a plenty to do to evaluate the topology of the, of the printed walls and then to correlate it with the mechanical uh, stability and the, and the static performance of such uh, elements. So I hope you, you, uh, you understood what I was talking about because I know it's a little bit far away from other presentations, but uh, I hope I, I kind of uh, introduced you a little bit to the 3D printing topic. And uh, I wanted to thank all of my uh, associate, my colleagues who are, who are working together with me over years in the, within this project, especially uh, to student, Carla, who was doing the, the, the hardest work uh, related to the 3D printing and also my supervisor of my project. So if you're interested to learn more about 3D printing, please visit the website of my project, ultralightcon3d.com. So uh, feel free to ask me your questions. Thank you. Fantastic, Pavel. Very fascinating. Um, so the, the first question is, what is the biggest uh, 3D printer existing so far? Meaning how big uh, can be the print extractors? And that's the question from Magda Stegel. So I think to date that the biggest the biggest printers are uh, in, yeah, so they have to be like above yeah, this element. So so I think so far the biggest printer can, can uh, kind of allow you to print such, uh, such house. Okay. Hi, Paweł. Uh, that's from Joanna Kwiatek. Is there any potential uh, this technology will be used worldwide? What is the production cost in comparison to traditional concrete? Very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, with 3D printing is same uh, like with graphene. So it's the same story that there's a big boom now, or it was actually a few years ago that, that everybody were thinking that we'll start printing. It, it will definitely say, take some time because uh, I think today the material is, I would say, two three times more expensive than the conventional concrete. So we still have to, we still have to kind of find the, the best solution. But uh, you also have to think whether it is good actually to use it in the conventional, you know, construction of the houses. Maybe this can be used in some uh, in some very uh, uh, very specific fields. You know, for instance, some uh, some building some shelters. Or there are a lot of topics related now to, produ to, to for instance, produ producing the shelters during the, let's say, uh, some, uh, yeah, like Fukushima accident or something like that. So there, there cannot be too many human involved in building the, the, the sarcophagus or some shelters. So, so this can be used for this specific application. So we have these first houses printed in, in Netherlands, in Germany, in China. So I think we need still a 10 years, 10, 15 years to see it maybe on our streets somewhere, somewhere around us. Cool. Uh, the next question from Nadia Landweiler. How well the 3D printed building can survive transition between negative and positive temperatures? Is it suitable for Poland, Switzerland uh, climate, or is it better for places where there's no winter? Yeah, it, you know, in general, uh, the construction, if, if you go to the uh, to the warm countries, let's call it warm countries, to Spain or, or to Portugal, you see that the houses, they, they are not insulated because it's... Uh, it's it generally it is it is easier to build houses there because the requirements are not that uh, not that not that high uh, in in the in the moderate and the cold climates we have to be really uh, we have to really carefully design 
the building envelopes. So, uh, yeah, we still have to think how how thick should be the wall to meet the requirements uh, for the for the cold climate. So, uh, and also we need to analyze. This is another topic. What I what, what I said in the, in the beginning of my presentation. We don't know yet too much about the durability. So we don't know. We have to really study what will be the long be, long term behavior of such uh, of such uh, buildings. Because if we assume that the water is going inside a 3D printed element, as I said here, there might be the, the water coming here. And then obviously when you have an ice, when it's frozen, it expands. So it can destroy the element. So this is, uh, this is what we are actually working on now to find whether, whether we can use these materials in, 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 the, in the cold climates. Okay, we have a final question from uh, Piotr Jan Balwiesz. Uh, what are the maximal deviation from vertical from walls to print roofs, for example? Do these materials have better properties? Once again, can you maybe I can read the question because I'm not. I'm not uh, can I find it somewhere here? Or? Yes, it's in, in the chat. What are the, the deviations from vertical from walls? So, like, what is the structure? If I yeah, understand so, correctly. Okay, I understand. So, well, you have to. You have to. So, if you want to print a roof, you have to make it in the kind of a dome structure. So you, you can make it a step by step. So this is another challenge we are thinking how to how how to make this a flat surface is how to print them. So this is still um, yeah to study. I guess there's a lot of room for development of new things here. Thank you so much, Pavel, Thank for pre pre presenting this wonderful presentation.